Scooch! Scooch your poochie! Scooch your poochie! Disclaimer. We do not own or claim ownership of the Pokemon franchise and any Pokemon established in official canon. That's all owned by Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures. This is just a podcast made by four friends who love Pokemon. It's our love letter to a franchise most of us grew up with. So please go support the official release. Previously on PKMN Legacy. Oh, I thought I'd smelled something most common. Chadwickington. He requests a a one-on-one exhibition battle with Mistress Leclerc. I saw people on one of the sandbars. I couldn't really make it out, though. It's really foggy. Oh, how we would only be able to get there, maybe. Stealing his yacht. Yes. What's got you so angry towards him? I almost got kicked out of school because of him. He still got big off of my work. This guy sounds like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you head to his yacht. SS Midas. That's very pretentious. You see a tuft of green feathers peek up from on top. Oh. It's Nuzlocke. The hops Maddie aboard. Jones. We might got some stowaways on board. Full alert. All right. I rolled a 69 with my my ritualistic D100 this session, so we're going to have a nice session. Uh a few things I want to go over for this before I bring up the new map. Okay. okay. If I say freeze, uh, please do not move your tokens anymore so I can narrate some shit happening in the world around Sounds you. Sounds good. Okay. Also, depending on how you want to do this, there might be some stealth bits. Uh, in which case, uh, considering Velma's the only one who's sneaky is not in the negative. Well. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of fair play, I am going to bring everyone back up to at least one fate point, which means Chris... You're not in zero fate points anymore. You're at one. Yay. Yay. Awesome. You might also notice that I have this little camera thing. Yeah. I was like, what is that? Um, When we were doing the dream world sequence, I realized that since Maddie was the only token there, the other two couldn't really see where she was going. So this is the fix that. That's awesome. We got a cameraman. Oh my God. Cameraman. It's it's your personal lucky two. But I'm going to, I'm going to delete that for now because you're all on the same level. Awesome. Uh, Other than that. At this point, the yacht has left the harbor, and you're in the middle of the sandbars, sailing around. Right now, you're at the stern of the ship, uh, just huddled together, your backs to the main cabins, hiding from the cultists that may be on this ship. So, what are the options of getting off the boat? Um, <laughs> swimming. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty out of the harbor now, right? Yep. Well, there goes Chris's idea. Anybody else? Uh, wait, so we saw the cultists. Like, they, we thought that they heard us, right? And then we managed to not be seen, right? They checked the docks as you left. And they didn't see you on there. So, they're aware that there is a slight possibility there might be some stowaways on this ship. But they're not going to worry about it right now. They're just going to keep a watchful eye. So the punishment for not doing that well with your sneaky rolls on getting on this ship and being caught on the docks is that they're not going to start this whole thing at a completely calm mindset. Okay, so they know someone's here, right? It's slightly wary at this point. You're not uh, in deep heat yet, but... Could be soon. It's just a very mild heat right now in terms of their awareness. It's tepid. It's tepid. Tepid. Really, the only option is to try to find a way to not be behind this one area, probably get to a safe room and figure out what to do then. Which, I guess it just depends with where you guys want to go, because we can only go right or left, right? Or above. Right, but to start. Um... Yeah, well... Can I make can I make a perception check, okay? Uh, to do what? Just to figure out if we should go right or left. If you want to peek around some of the corners or behind these doors where the mats are, you can make a careful check. Gotcha. I got a two. It's not so bad. Okay. So yeah, uh, go ahead and move one of your tokens to uh, one of the doors, okay. and we'll work from there. One of the doors? You can see two doors on both sides of the stern side ship part thing, ship jargon. Two doors to your right and to your left. Past those doors, they go around the corners of the ship. Right, I see what you're saying. So go basically move my token to the right or the left to see what's up ahead. So I'm going if if the I'm going this way. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna move so you guys can see. Because I was like, 
So as you pass the, uh, the door closer to the starboard side of the ship, you peek your head up to the door's window and get a glance inside the room. And it's this very luxuriously designed lounge area and dining area. You see these, uh, cult, uh, the oh, a chaise lounge. Chase lounges, that's what they're called. These chase lounges around a coffee table and everything's gold in there, uh, even a dining table. In the room, you see two cultists, uh, robes on, uh, with three Pokemon about them, just hanging out and chilling, a Boltoy, a Gulpin, and a Zubat. And in the back, you see Briarwood standing at attention. Okay. Uh, do I see this like through the windows? Yes. Okay. They do not see you with that careful check of two. Okay. So I rush back around to Chris and Velma. Okay. So we might be a little bit in over our heads here. Define a little. Well, we've got a couple members of the cult uh, in this room just over there. And uh, you know who's a butler is kind of standing by the door. I, I can't really tell if he's a hostage or not. Are you serious? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, all right. Well, we can't go there, so... I mean, we could. There's, there's only two of them. I mean, we've beaten them before. It's just... Yeah, but causing a ruckus might make things worse. I haven't even seen, you know, that guy. Listen, I may not like him, but I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to him. Well, how do we know we do? he's not working for them? He isn't in sight. Maybe he is. Mm, he might be on a lower deck. That's what I was thinking. Well, and Chris turns to Velma. What do you think? So our options are to either sneak around or trying to take on these guys. Am I getting? Am I correct in that? It seems to be, yeah. Well, I think it wouldn't hurt if we gave the place a little more of a check out. Just to see if there's anything up front that can help us. I don't know how lucky I'll get this time. I can try checking again, but... I can go this time. I'm pretty sure if Velma sneaks around, she'll just blend in with the surroundings like a, like a Kecleon? Kecleon, right? Yeah, Kecleon. Let's give it a go. So what are you trying to do now? Try to sneak around to the front of the boat, see if there's anything else that can help us. Okay, so you have two options. You can either go, go along the deck on the starboard side where Maddie just was, or go along the port side. Let's do the port. You go down to the port side of the ship. Around the corner, you see that the lounge area that Maddie was peeking into, uh, there is this very long pane of glass window uh, along the entire perimeters of the port and starboard side walls of the lounge. You can try to sneak past this uh, if you like duck down and crouch, maybe. Uh, I will need a sneaky check from you, though if you want to do that. All right, let's try and mean sneak. You dance a four. Woo! Nice. Very nice. Sneak, sneak, Listen, sneak. you did roll a really good uh, D100 roll. I'm, something's going on here. Go ahead and describe how you, how you sneak past. So what Velma does is that she gets down real low, and then she just kind of scoochie, scoochie, scoochies along the floor, and you can still kind of see her little hair pigtail things kind of waving back and forth as she's going below the window, but no one seems to really pick it up. <laughs> yeah, luckily they blend in perfectly with the gold surroundings. Exactly. As you are scooching, scooching, passing by the window, you can hear through the glass one of the cultists <clears throat> and his muddy feet, boom, boom, go around to the table, mud everywhere. Hey, uh, Jeeves, how about you go into the uh, kitchen, get us some, uh, some rich folk food, huh? Yes, right away, sirs. And you hear him scuffle off to the hallway and into the kitchen. Hey, you know you don't have to be rude about it. I mean, he's kind of like a slave here, kind of. No, he gets paid. Don't worry about it, dude. It's all fine. Just focus on not embarrassing me when we get to the rally, okay? Okay. And finally, you scooch, scooch, scooch over to the other side. Now, on the other side of this long stretch of window, you see a door with a glass window going into the hallway, and you can see a clear shot of the kitchen where you see Briarwood working on some, some hors d'oeuvres for his guests. And there's the rest of the deck leads over to the bow of the ship. If I wanted to go further up to see, to sneak around to just see if I can see around the corner where the bow looks like, do I have to make another sneaky check? Or can I keep going? Currently, to your knowledge, 
you do not see any hazards that might require you to be sneaky. So you can just go ahead and walk up to the bow of the ship if you want. I'm gonna do that then. I think I'm just gonna walk up to the bow of the ship, see what's up front. Okay. And scooch. Right next to you around this corner, stairs leading up to the top deck, and past it you can see a faint glint from the windows of the bridge. But you can't see if anyone's inside there. Hmm. Not from this angle, at least. All right. In that case, I'm gonna try to sneak back over to Maddie and Chris. Okay, you know what? With that four, I'll say that you know the route and you can sneak past there without having to worry about right. those cultists. So, I managed to sneak past it. Doesn't look like anybody's up at the front, as far as I know. I also overheard something from the window. Doesn't seem like that, uh, whatever it is, that Jeeves, whatever his name is, guy. It doesn't seem like he's in distress. He said he was still getting paid. So, I don't know if he's with them, or it's that rich, rich guy who's with them. Hmm. He's, you, where did you say he was now? He's making some food? Yeah, so right now he's occupied. I did see a door on the other side, and it looks like it goes into another room right before you hit the kitchen. So if we wanted to sneak inside, we could get food there. And also at the front, it seems that there's a stairwell that leads up to the top floor somewhere. But I don't know what's at the top of that, so... Well, maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we should go see what's going on away from those occultists. Probably a good idea. What do you think, Chris? So you're saying that the butler is not in distress? As far as I can tell, he's just the same as he was when he saw us. And he's making the cultists food? I mean, they said he was getting paid, so... What in the ding-dong devil? I'd rather avoid fighting if I can, so if we can somehow get a top figure out more of what's going on, it might be in our best benefit. Top side we go. Okay, does Chris have to make a, a sneaky roll? Because if he does, I don't know how that's going to go down. Velma knows how to get past these windows. Okay. Which will lower the DC for you two sneaking past, but you both still will have to roll, both you and Maddie. Even though I rolled before? That was just a peek around. Okay. And that was a careful check. Yeah. Because you didn't have to do anything actively. Right, okay. Which side do you want to try to sneak past? The starboard side or the port side? Hmm, that's actually, I mean, well, technically speaking, either side is kind of still a risk. Yeah. Technically. But I mean, I think we're, we're, it seemed like the cultist, the door to their like office thing was on the side that Maddie went on. But the stairwell Mm. was on the port side, which was closer. I think we should probably go to the port side. So long as we are away from the door so they can't clearly hear me uh yeah <laughs> unless that like is seems too easy you know if all else fails then diamond use hypnosis and hope and pray to god it works <laughs> all right let's go uh, i'm scared okay i got a three chris please dice gods on, help <laughs> please please it'd dice so gods. Got, it'd be so funny if you got me oh! Oh! <laughs> negative two no! <laughs> well, gosh, darn it. So, Velma got a, a four. Maddie got a three. Chris got a negative two. I'm sorry. So, I will say the three of you go to the port side of the ship and follow Velma's lead as you scurry, scurry, scurry past the window. Scooch, 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 Chris, as you bend down to just get into scooching position, there's an audible pop as your as the (laughs) old bones in your 35 year old body creak. Mm. Oh no! Did you hear something? Oh no! Dude, it's fine. Just relax, man. I don't know. I'm going to go check out the stern of the ship real quick. Oh, shit. Scoochie butch! Chris Hyde, Chris Hyde! Scoochie butch! Mm-hmm. Scoochie your butchie! Scoochie your butchie! You scurry it like hell to the other side of the ship as you hear a door open on the stern side. Hello? Anybody here? I swear I could have heard something. Hey, dude. Just relax, all right? Look, I'm already taking a big risk in having you be my plus one to this whole thing. Don't embarrass me, all right? You hear the door close. What a jerk. 
mental note. Chris will remember this. So, you have two options. Uh, go around the bow, see if you can peek around the window, go up the stairs, or you can head back to that other door leading into the hallway. Before we do that, I just want Velma, she turns to Chris and she says, we're through all this, we're taking you to our chiropractor. <laughs> all I wish for is my bones to no longer make that sound. All right, so you've got a bit more heat on you, but it's not too much. You're still relatively safe. What do you do now? Well, there's a stairway here, so go up that. What is the pecking order here? Who's going up the stairs first? Probably Velma. Chris, I think you should go in the middle so Maddie can protect you in the back because she has the next highest sneak roll. And then in case you hurt your back again, he doesn't lag behind. You go up the stairs. Sneak, 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 sneak. And it seems that this top deck is relatively simple compared to the lower decks. And the majority of it, a little battlefield set up for exhibition matches. And over near this makeshift bar with some golden tables, uh, you see a cultist just huddling over the bar, sipping some margarita. Uh, his back is to you. You also see his Dunsparce just sunbathing and just snoozing on the uh, on the little bar on the edge of it. Ah, uh, crap. Do we abort? Mm. There's only one of them, but I feel like we're going to start attracting them. It's going to make a noise, definitely. It's definitely, unless we don't have any Pokemon that know sleep powder, do we? Doesn't Bellini know sing? Bellini does know sing, and I know that... Diamond does know... Hypnosis, hypnosis would make hypnosis. less noise, I would but, guess. Uh, but hypnosis can only target... Is it only one individual? The Dunsparce is already a... Because ah. my other thought was, is, would Diamond be loud, though? Because I know Bellini's smaller. Well, I know Diamond, the only noise that Diamond makes is when it moves, it's really ungodly cracking sound. Right. <laughs> well, the only thing that I can think of that might be just as good is, be, is the fact that Bellini is tinier and can kind of walk around. And if Bellini were to walk up to the cultist, he might just be like, who left their Pokemon out but wouldn't know who whose it is really. True. Until Bellini starts singing and then pff, out like a True. light. True. I'm cool with that. Well, Maddie, you're up. Can I send out Bellini, Kay? You most certainly can. I do need you to make a sneaky check. Though. Another one? You have to let it out. And Pokeball is opening up and releasing their Pokemon does make a bit of a sound. Oh, God. Mm. We don't have any items, right, guys? Uh, that could, like, put them to sleep. Uh, uh, Can the Psychic Gem do anything, Kay? The Psychic Gem, if you're not using that for your your fashion project, you can also no, use I that for any one Psychic-type damaging move. You can give it a boost to its power. But that consumes it in the process. Okay, I need that Psychic Can gem. we use it to hit him in the head? No, I need it. We use a curl. <laughs> no, we need it. <laughs> I mean, we could probably get it back after it's hit him. What if it breaks? What if it's like valuable? There's a reason we got that thing. All right, we could use the soda pop bottle then. Yeah, true. That's expensive. Throw the ranch soda at him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys want to do it? I mean, it could I mean, work. I feel like, I feel like we're, we're uh, playing a little risky here. <laughs> this is how we solve the puzzle. We hit him with the with the thingy. That's how he goes to sleep. <laughs> thingy. <laughs> I mean, Chekhov's Ranch. Chekhov's Ranch. Well, <laughs> okay, so we either are putting him to sleep or... Uh, We're putting, or putting, putting him, him to sleep. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We all three did that. It's like, it's like Sam's butter sock from my car. Basically. <laughs> oh, yeah, the butter sock. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Do we want to flip a coin for I was going to say, I think we should flip a coin. Okay, well, like let, me get, coin. let right. me get her out. Wait, 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 Hold wait, wait, on. wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Because... <laughs> Real quick, though, we will no doubt cause noise if we beat him to a pulp, <laughs> but there's a chance we won't cause noise if Bellini is used. To be fair, depending on how sneaky we are, if we, we get a high beat, enough roll... We, we cannot beat him to a pulp silently. All right, then fine. Well, I guess, we're out uh, on the water, and it's probably loud from the from the waves and all that. Please. <laughs> if you get... I mean, it's it's like with the Vulcan nerve pinch. If you do it good enough, they'll go, they'll go down. Stop. Okay, so heads, it's sing, tails, it's ranch. Yes? Sure. Seems, yep, seems let's like go it. for it. All right. 
Time to bring back the crowd favorite. Hey Siri, heads or tails? It's tails. Yes! Well, no! yes! <laughs> she has yes! spoken. Bring out the ranch pot. Bring out the ranch! Oh, God. God dang it. Yes, let's go! All right. Let's go! We're doomed. Well, Velma, you've got the ranch because you're the one who drinks that, so. I, have fun. Oh, wait, how funny would it be if Chris and Maddie were like discussing some sort of like way to go about this and Velma just like silently pulls the ranch bottle out? Looks yeah. at Chris and Maddie as they're like discussing, <laughs> and just like walks over. <laughs> That's up to you, Gigi. But like, let's, let's freaking do that. Hilarious. I want to do that. That is perfect. <laughs> okay, action. Okay, so how are we going to do this, Chris? I, I think so. Velma, while this is going on, she's just looking at him. She slowly pulls out the ranch bottle from her coat. She tiptoes over. Tip. 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 What's the chance? Tip. I've never seen it not work. Tip. I mean, it is a nice song. And I need you to make a forceful check. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> that is a <laughs> negative one. Well, did I send out Bellini really mm. quickly now? It's a good thing that I made sure you guys had at least one fate point, huh? <laughs> All right. You know what? If I'm ever going to oh, use it. Oh, my God. I'll use it here. Now, do you want to re-roll or do you want to bring that up to a one? Your forceful ability score is negative two. So you actually got a, a relatively okay roll with forceful, relatively speaking. I mean, a one a one isn't too bad, but when you re-roll it, it's also taking another risk for it to be lower. Yeah. Should I just go with the one you got, You think you guys think? I mean, it's a... It's, it's got a higher chance. I mean, it may not be a, a two, but a one is better than a negative yeah. one. You know what, I'll take the one. You bash it over his head. <laughs> Ow! Who the hell did- And he turns around and, wait, who's there? And he's looking above you. <laughs> <laughs> Now's your chance, run! And he, he eventually sees you. I'm gonna need you to roll initiative. Okay. All right. So you got a one, he got a zero. So you have a chance to do something. So the bottle's completely shattered, right? Yes. The bottle's shattered. He's a bit damaged. His Dunsparce is slowly waking up a bit. Uh, can I bring out, can I bring out Minion and use Confusion on him? Make a quick check. And I will have you contest it against his quick check. Two, your two versus his one. Yeah. You're able to quick draw him and... Do what you need to do. So just as he's kind of coming to it, Bella just quickly, pow, whips out her Pokemon. She's like, Minion, confuse the guy. Minion just releases a, com- I don't know, I forget what the move looks like. Spiral of psionic energy, just drilling right at the guy's noggin. Whoa! Jesus. Oh boy. <laughs> so that is a 10 shift hit. You monster. Min- min- minion? He <laughs> reaches down for something to use, maybe a Pokeball, or maybe it wakes the Dunsparce up. He looks at his margarita bottle, cracks it on the table, but before he can do anything, he is blasted with that psychic energy, stumbles over, his eyes are whited out as he grabs the hole of the bar, accidentally grabs the Dunsparce, and lands on him. Oh, oh Dunsparce no. is struggling to get out. Uh, he's just wiggle, 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 and he tries to pop out on the other side. Should we try to pop that Dunsparce back into its Pokeball? You see the Dunsparce sees the, uh, the, the four of you now and tries to... Just, oh, boy. Like, <laughs> crawl away over to the other side of the deck. Wait. Uh, can, I try, can I try and capture it? It is a caught Pokemon, so you can't catch it with one of your own Pokeballs. I was thinking we could use one of the berries to attract it, kind of get, maybe we could use it to be like, hey, it's okay. Do you think it, tr- it would trust us <laughs> after what it just saw? Well, it actually was asleep. Well, it was asleep, mind. so it doesn't know we do anything rup, about rup, it. Rup, you rup. sing, just go for it. Okay, Maddie just like in a sheer panic, like sends out Bellini. And she's like, Bellini, you sing right now, but just do it quietly. Oh my Whoa. God. <laughs> so, Bellini reaches into his scarf space, pulls out a little microphone, and turns the dial down to one. (laughs) 
Oh, I love his little song. And Dunsparce wiggles, wiggles, stumbles over his face and does a little flip onto his side. <laughs> he is asleep again. I want you to know, Kay, I did not expect it to go that way. I thought what you were going to say is believe <laughs> takes out the microphone from his, from their little Spring scarf hell. and bonks the Dunsparce on the head and that's how they fall asleep. I actually thought that's how it was going to go. That's I'll so make funny. I'll of that for later scenarios. You hear a door open from the cabin and someone shouts up to you, hey, man, you all right up there? Hearing some noises. Uh, You're the only uh, one. Okay, uh, Chris is going to try to imitate. <gasps> oh, cool. oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> What if, what if, what if Chris takes like the unconscious body and just kind of tries to puppet it over, over the grill? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Actually, that sounds better. And she tries to pick him up, and she looks to Chris and Maddie for like, no, do the thing. Oh, what? right, right, right. And so Chris, like, you know, power walks over to where the body is and helps lift him up, and starts using him as a puppet. Poor guy, he didn't sign up for this. Okay, so you weekend Bernie's the shit out of him. And you <laughs> lift him over the railing, and what do you do? Chris is going to do his best, like, muffled grunt, but he's also... Wait, this guy was drinking a margarita, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, man, it's just, uh... Mm, these margaritas are amazing. Who keeps, who keeps making them? I, I forgot how many, how many I have. Where are we going again? Hey, Dunsparce! Uh, keep him away from the margaritas. I think he's had enough. Yes, I'll tell you what I've had. All right, all right, just sober up. You're going to embarrass yourself when we get to the mm. rally. Or worse, me. I love you too, man. Every time with you. I guess that's classic him for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear the door close. Oh, my God. I can't believe that worked. Now then, here's my next question. We're at the top of this place. What do we do now? Velma's thinking for a minute. And sh- how tall is this grunt, by the way? He is about... Height-wise, in comparison. Uh, compared to you, he's about twice your height, Velma. He stands at about five foot ten. How, how tall, tall is Chris? Chris? Yeah, I know. We're the same thing. Now, hold up. Wait a minute. Want to play some dress-up, Chris? I mean, you'll be my favorite. Uh, anyway. Define dress-up. That it just cuts to a scene of Chris in the clothes. <sighs> <Just, laughs> uh, do we want to do this? I guess we're doing this because... <laughs> Technically speaking, he's the only one who's been in an organization, so... Okay. I guess. Well, in that case... <laughs> they get cultist robes! Yeah. Yay! You have acquired the key item, cultist robes. You only have one right now, but you put, you do a little fashion montage of Please. getting Chris to wear the outfit. It's a bit of a snug fit, and his ankles are kind of exposed a bit. <laughs> like the pants, like the pants don't really fit all the way. We can see his gams. <laughs> <laughs> I've never skipped leg day. Chris is dummy thick. <laughs> <laughs> and he has such a horrible sneaky stroke because the clap of his ass keeps keep <laughs> running the cultists. <laughs> we did it, people. Uh, we did it. Uh, yes! That's the pod. That's season one. See y'all next time. Uh, This is not how I wanted my life to go. (laughs) Guys, I have told a lie. Oh, you told a lie? You lied to us? This is not the end of season one. That was a fib to segue us into the pause menu. Forgive me. It's okay. We forgive you. For now. I mean, I mean, they do. Uh, uh, not, not me. That's fair. Um, welcome to the pause menu. Thank you so much for enjoying the episode so far. Consider supporting the show on Patreon. You get rewards like your name in the end credits of the YouTube release. Uh, access to the bonus tidbits. Uh, this latest bonus tidbit was me trying to figure out how to do a puzzle. Because I looked back in my life and I don't think I've ever successfully run a puzzle, like a pure puzzle in a session. I thought you just meant you hadn't actually ever done a puzzle, like a physical puzzle. Yeah, that's what I thought too. (laughs) I was like... I got to work on my titling then. (laughs) Uh, You you could say that I was puzzled. Or if you're one of our Ultra Ball tier patrons, you get your name mentioned here in the pause menu verbally, like Cami Cat. Cybernetic Pink Eye, Donkey Oto, Lizzie McPoof, and Mr. Someone. For patrons and for people who support the show on Twitter using the hashtag PKMNLegacy, we might use your name for one of our NPCs. We've already 
introduced these characters before, but Laz A. Chadwickington III, heir to the Chadwickington Fortune, <gasps> named after the Lazy Shadow on Patreon. My arch nemesis. We hate Laz A, but we do like Lazy Shadow. Yes. So. <laughs> Lazy Shadow's not my arch nemesis. Yet. And, of course, Briarwood the Butler, named after Briarwood the on Twitter. <laughs> do you have to add in the the part? That's the, I think that's their Twitter handle, but they're actually like a ta- actual play tabletop podcast themselves. I think we mentioned this before. Anywho, I think we have some plugs to get through. Um, Ariana, do you want to start? Sure, because I for once have something to plug. Currently, right now, I am actually in a production of Legally Blonde. If you are in the Los Angeles area and would like to come see me as Enid Hoops, um, I will be playing Enid until June 5th with a couple shows as Vivian as well. A uh, little, little sprinkled in there because I'm Vivian's understudy. And so this is uh, through Cupcake Theater in the Hollywood Majestic. So you can get tickets at hollywoodmajestic.com. It also features the American Idol star Margie Mays. So she will be playing Elle Woods and it's been a really fun time. So come see us. That's so okay. cool. Yeah, it's been really fun. Like an actual in- in-person thing? Yeah. Not just like an internet Oh no, thing? it's in person. It's real. Ooh, really rad. I will include the link to where you can get tickets in the description for the show. Yes, and if you do come tweet at me, Ariana and George, because then I will know you're there and I will come say hi. Chi-Chi, uh, one thing I do know that you've been in. Um, so, how many rappers? Uh, 90. What? No, or it might be 85? Let me check that but out. But it's a lot of rappers. Basically, it went for every Smash character is what it is. And it was with Nerd Out, and you can go check that out on YouTube right now if there's Smash Ultimate Cypher, and I was Peach on it. So, yeah, definitely give it a check out. And today, what released um, on today's date, I don't know if it's going to be today for you guys, but I was on. I did a collab with Victor McKnight and Caleb Piles and Billy the Bard, and it is a Sonic song up to speed, and it's in promotion for the... New Sonic movie that came out recently. Hey, like promotion as in sponsor? No, 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 no. I mean, like it's a fu- like a fan kind of song thingy. So definitely go check okay, it out. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> Should I clear Just that wanted out? to make sure. Oh, but yeah, definitely go check those out. Links in the description for the show. Cool. All right, uh, dry. <laughs> cool. Me. Um, <laughs> hmm. Uh-oh. You left us. Dry guy, more like bye guy. Bye, bye, bye. Well, um, I mean, I guess I've been working out a bit, so that's... that's nice. That's Ooh, getting them games. The first time in like five years. I can kind of lift five pounds on the dumbbells. Hey, nice. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, well, while we figure out where the hell Dry went, um, why don't we get back to the episode and I'll fix this Baby, thing. dry, 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 dry. Unpause. All right, you are now wearing the cultist robes. I feel so exposed. (laughs) You look great. Is that color really suits you? I believe I'm more of a red, but this works too. That does beg the question, what do we do with the other guy? Yeah, you turn around, you see the the very pale cultist uh, in his skivvies, little uh, boxer shorts with Snorlaxes on them. Do the cultists know what each other looks like actually, or... They only see each other on the road. You do not know that. Ah, oh, dang, because we could just be like, we found the intruder, guys, and then they'll never know. I guess maybe in the meantime, uh, do we have anything we can tie him with? Uh, string shot? Maybe we string shot the guy and just shove him under the bar. Please. <laughs> and he is wrapped up in sticky webbing as you just roll him and tuck him under the bar with all the spare bottles of margarita. Chris, in your... Cultist robe pockets, you feel the Pokeball of the Dunsparce. I'm going to pop that Dunsparce back into its Pokeball. Cool beans. I guess I will give you a Dunsparce for the time being. Yeah. But here's the question. If they, if it, well, actually, I don't know how this is going to play out because even if they just look at me and go, you don't really look like a cultist. Well, we'll find out, won't we? (laughs) Yes, we will. I'm going to have Chris walk down and make his way into that room where the other cultists are, trying to put on his best face to kind of like blend in with the area and also the other cultists. So just to sort of get information. Reconnaissance. Cool. And I am just going to put this little marker on you so we can remember you are disguised. 
list. Oh, yeah. How are you getting there? Are you just going through the door that you passed on the way here, or are you going around the corner and back to the stern of the ship? I'm actually going to go through that door. Might as well just casually walk through. Hey, Maddie, Velma, what's your sitch? I don't... Well, wait, wait. What if... What if we pretend to be Chris's hostages? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Because then maybe they'll be like, take him to the lower deck with the other guy. And then we'll find Lazy. What? How? Lazy. Lazy. I knew it was Lazy. Chad I, Wickington. I the keep third. forgetting. <laughs> to the Chad Wickington fortune. Lazy fair. Because it's Lazy fair. I don't know. I keep thinking it's Lazy. Richie McRitch Rich. God, I even speak French. I'm just the worst. Anyway. Lazy. Then maybe we'll find Lazy. Chris. Yes. Are you going to do with the hostage, Trojan hostage situation here or no? Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do okay. that. All right. So Chris obviously discusses what's going to be happening with uh, Velma and Maddie about being quote unquote hostages. And he basically says, you know, just sort of follow his lead. Try not to speak out too much because, you know, don't want them to get a little wary of the situation. Talk less, smile more. Huh. Chris then starts putting on his game face and, yeah, walks through the door. So, yeah, you go into the port side hallway. As you enter, you can see Briarwood in the kitchen, still working on making the best hors d'oeuvres he can try at this point. Uh, down the hallway, you see two doors. One leads to the lower deck and the other leads to the bridge of the ship. Ooh. And as you go through... The door is to the lounge. You enter it. The other two cultists sort of bolt up, uh, stand at attention, and they see you and... Wait, hey, what's going on, man? I found these two at the end of the ship. Seems as though we're trying to be stowaways. What do you think we should do with them? I want you to make a clever check. Uh... A two? Uh, hey, guess you're right. There were some stowaways on board. Yeah, I told you, man. Okay. Yeah, put him in the lower deck with that rich freak under there. Wait, how come they aren't tied up? Why would I need to tie up something that's not a real threat to me? I mean, so they don't move around in the lower deck. Obviously. Oh, that's adorable. You think they're going to actually do something. You see, that's the difference between you and me. I'm not afraid. You seem to be. <laughs> oh, you better hope that's Margarita's talking, asshole. Some of my friends got hit hard by two runs and a guy back at the grotto. Don't know if these are them, and I'm not taking any chances. And you see him pull out some rope over and under and there. See? Nice and tight. Now you don't have to whine so much. You, yeah. Wait a second. Hey, um, okay, I don't mean to be weird, but were you always black? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I want you to repeat that and say it slower this time. <laughs> Flame the racist. Uh, I'm just, uh, um. You're just what? You're just what? Please, um, elaborate. Um, mm, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, you know what? I am going to go look for some will lords over there. Cool. Okay. Um. And he just runs the fuck out of the room. <laughs> hey, they may be the villains. <laughs> At least they're not racist. Boy, well. No, they are. No, they are. But it's the fact that like, he was I'm like, I don't need to be rude. Like, he did straight up. <laughs> he made an attempt. It wasn't a good attempt, but he made an attempt. They're evil and they're assholes. But even they know when they've made a fucky one. <laughs> Meanwhile, the whiny cultist looks at you. Um. Okay. <laughs> Walk behind Maddie and Velma and look at the ropes that were tied, and he's just gonna go, Great. Not only is he rude, but he can't even tie an actual knot. I gotta do this myself. But what he's actually gonna do is loosen the knots so that Velma and Maddie can just pull them apart. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you don't need to make a sneaky check. I think you have enough training to know how to tighten and loosen knots and stuff. So you loosen them just enough so that they can break out of them when the time is right. Mm. Perfect. Yeah, so I I I'm just gonna wait here, I guess, for the fancy food. Um 
look, I, I'm sorry about my friend. He's just under a lot of stress. He's really excited about this rally going on. It's not your fault. I'm sorry that you have to deal with someone as incompetent as him. I understand he's your friend, but unfortunately, it seems as though your friend doesn't have the best interest for himself or yourself, and that is very abhorrent. Also, I may not know your name, but just know that you can call me David. If you need anything from me, please do not hesitate to ask. I really appreciate everything that you do here. You're a good man. And he gives him a pat on the shoulder. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, my name is Dunebug. Dunebug? I shall remember that, Dunebug. And he gives him a cultist smile through his mask, even though he probably can't see his face. But anyway, he's like, all right, I'm going to take these two down to the lower area. All right. So, you succeed. <laughs> that was fucking bizarre. That was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Maddie, Chris, Velma, you stand at the top of the steps to the lower deck. You can hear the thrum of the engine room below you. Okay, but for real though, are we actually going to have you guys go down to the lower deck or are we going to go somewhere else? Maybe if we can find Lazeza, we can get some answers. You raise a valid point. They did say he was down in the lower area as well, so... And they got get suspicious if they see us walking around. Ooh, very good point. But maybe Velma and I can go down there and you can explore elsewhere because you've got the disguise. Right. So what I'll, here's what we'll do. I'll take you guys down there, and then I'll leave to come back up here just to make it so it's not too suspicious, as you said, and kind of survey the area to see what else I can find or what else I can learn. Sounds good. So Chris takes Maddie and Velma down to the lower deck. Okay, one moment while I load up. <laughs> All right, God. Sounds good. Thank you, God. Oh, you hear him too. Every now and again. A normal person would be probably get uncomfortable with being called God so much, but I got a complex. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Also, do you want to take away my fate point? Yes, thank you for reminding Why me. Why did you tell him? <laughs> because she's an honest evil genius, and I respect that. Maybe you should let her keep it then. No. <laughs> you walk down the iron steps to the dark engine room. Oh, it is dark in here. Yes, very dark. But from the sound of it, it seems to be a relatively small chamber. You can hear some generators coming from around you, some pipes going along it, holding electrical wires and such. Uh, what do you do? Chris is going to take out his sea gear and turn on the flashlight to see a little clearer. Move a bit closer to kind of get a better look at what this area looks like so he doesn't trip over and, you know, bonk his head somewhere. Uh, there are these huge generators around here uh, in this relatively square room. You can hear inside the metal shell this thrumming engine inside it. And as you turn the corner, Chris, with your flashlight, you shine a light on a bound and gagged laze. Oh! oh. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't speak muffle. Well, I did have a pretty good day today, but I see that you're having a pretty bad one. Maddie's just like laughing to herself, like trying not to be like rude, but she thinks this is hilarious. <laughs> Uh, Chris is going to walk over to Laze and remove his, just this mouth binding and take that off. <laughs> Finally, about time that someone got that accursed thing off of my lips. Hmm. Quiet down. You're so loud. Oh, like anyone can hear us when the engines are this loud. I think I'm going to have permanent damage to my ears. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they could hear you. So shut it. Where's Briarwood anyway? He should have been back to... Untie me by now. Oh, your little butler? He's uh, off making food for the guys up there. <gasps> Sounds like he's not much of a friend to you, is he? Those are my old devs. Oh, the nerve of that butler. Probably just looking after his own ass. Oh, look after his own ass? Sounds familiar. Maddie, diss him later. We should probably be the nice, good Samaritans and help him. Yes, and don't worry about her. She's just jealous because my ass is worth watching over. And I immediately have Chris put the binding back over his mouth and right. tie it tightly. <laughs> now then, now then, let's come up with a plan of how we're going to go and get this guy out of here. Well, I think we should probably also ask him what happened. But I just put this back on there, and I'm I'm very... I, I just, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> See, he agrees with me. <laughs> anyway. Listen, as much as I agree, 
Come on. <sighs> Look, how, all right. I'm going back up there just to keep an eye out on the top deck, just to make sure nothing happens to you guys or anyone comes down here. So try to make it quick. If you need me, uh, scream. And Chris makes his way back up away from them and goes back upstairs. Maddie and Velma, you are alone with the still gagged Blase. Okay, so when we take this off, just tell us what happened. Can you do that? <laughs> All right. And then Velma just tears the gag off him. Thank you. Now, we were waiting for Maddie to accept our invitation for an exhibition match where I would defeat her in glorious combat. Well, I don't know about that. But then we were accosted by those gaudy cultists. Those robes are so tacky. Not a hint of gold on them. They're just muddy and green. Have you seen them before? No, of course I haven't seen them before. I think I remember someone who is so ill-fashioned. Uh, why are you looking at me? Anywho. Why, you little... Uh, Evie, 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 Evie. We're all victims here for the moment. So, let's just try to get this figured out. What are we going to do next? Well, I would help you, but they have my Pokemon. Do you have any idea where they would put them? All I know is that the helmsman has my Pokemon. They probably have them on his hand right now. My precious, beautiful, shiny babies. The helmsman? Yes, the helmsman at the, at the bridge of the ship. He seems to be the most organized of those four idiots. Okay, so there's four of them. What did the helmsman look like? He just was wearing the same robe as everyone else. That terrible, terrible, gaudy robe. So, so there was nothing different about him? No, they all look the same to me. I think that says that they're all about the same rank. I don't think we're going to run into any sort of big bad. At least not yet. So, what were your Pokemon? My beautiful Sylveon and my Furfru. But what do you suggest we do? Maybe we can ask you, since this is your ship. I don't really do much of the work myself. It's mostly Briarwood who takes care well, of the- Well, for once in your life, maybe you should! Unless you don't want to make it out if you're alive with your precious Pokemon. I don't know. Control the helmsman and steer the ship to who knows where far away from here. Now what's the best place to get to the helm then? Is there any sort of secret entrance? What do you think this is? A, a little trick master's playhouse? Maybe. You're full of tricks, aren't you? Oh, is she Is she always like this? Only around those who deserve it. So it looks like we're not too far from the helm. I bet Chris could still sneak in there and try and knock out whoever's there. That sounds likely. Should we make our way? Well, what about him? Yes, what about me? I would like to be untied now. I'm sure you'd like that. I mean... That is a possibility, but wouldn't it also look awfully suspicious if you were down here and they ended up checking in? I mean, that might cause us some trouble. Oh, no, you don't. Don't you leave me here tied up like some commoner. Man, second thoughts, maybe we should. Don't you dare. Well, let's see if you can make it worth our while. I like what you're thinking, Velma. Is there anything that he could do for you that maybe would help? Is there anything he could do for me? Uh, I don't know. How about fix my entire life? To fix you? <laughs> I don't think there's enough money in the world to do that. Mm, okay, I guess I'll see you later then. Well, get, get back here. Come on, Delma. If, I, I'll scream. I, I'm scream over these infernal engines. Oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. And then she goes over to the little gag and he's like, we almost forgot about this. Wait, no, no. Wait, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you can offer us some real help, maybe we'll let you go. Maddie, what are your list of demands? Maybe you're more specific this time. How about, uh, once we get out of here, you admit to the whole world that you're a lying little cheat, and that those designs you released weren't even yours. I think that sounds mighty fair. <sighs> well, what's it gonna be, Rich Make Rich Rich? You want to stay down here, or do you want to own up to what you did? Mm. Tap your foot two times for yes, or once for no. Alrighty then. I think we can trust him this time. We'll see. I've got my eye on you. So you untie him and ungag him? Or at the very least, we untie him. Alright, so you untie him, and he gets up, and he rips the gag off of his mouth with his untied arms. Nice try. Fair enough. <laughs> 
Fine, if you two are going to eat my meat shields, then lead the way. You better watch your mouth. I can back down at any time. Well, then I won't reveal to the world all the secrets that you so desperately crave to be revealed. Where's the ones with the Pokemon here? Indeed. You're defenseless. He shuts up at that. That's what I thought. Well, Maddie, lead the way. Thank you.